What's your EQ? Let's find out a little bit more about you and self-awareness. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Karen McCullough, and today we're going to talk about self-awareness. It's big right now. Everybody's talking about the need for emotional intelligence in the workplace and self-awareness. Why? Because we have to relate and connect with people who are different than we are. And today, more than ever, we need some self-awareness. The big question is, how do you get it? Like, can I go get a pill? Can I go to the doctor and get some self-awareness? Not that easy, actually. So I thought I would give you some steps today, some a process and how we can begin to dig deeper into the self and maybe gain a little more self-awareness. And the first one, first one is easy, but it's something that people just don't do. And that is at the end of the day, spend a little bit of time thinking about how the day went and how you interacted with others. Think about what went on that day. Think about the positive and maybe things that didn't work so well and spend some time reflecting. You know what? Our days go by so fast. Reflection is probably one of the hardest things that we can do because we have to take time to think about ourselves and what happened that day. Number two, We have to practice mindfulness. This is an interesting one. When I first started speaking almost 20 years ago, my sister gave me a book on mindfulness. She said that I really needed to be in the moment because I needed to understand what people were saying, but I needed to grasp it while I was in the moment. I guess I'm a little hyper, and I guess maybe she thought I needed mindfulness because maybe at times I'm a little bit not connected. So I started reading books on mindfulness, and here's the thing. It says practice mindfulness, like when you're doing the dishes, when you're loading the dishwasher, when you're mowing the lawn, whatever it is that you're doing, take time to be in that moment. Not think about things that are happening outside, but be in the moment. I know this one for a fact, because when I started speaking a while back, I was really preoccupied with where I was going, and I thought about it all the time. And a good friend of mine, we were having dinner one night, she said, hey, where are you? She said, you're never here. She said, I've been talking to you for like a half an hour and I could tell that you are someplace totally different. And she said, it offends me. She had the courage to tell me and I still remember that. This is from years ago because I realized that I wasn't in the moment and it was disrespectful to her. So in self-awareness, we've got to begin to practice this mindfulness. Number three, develop being a good listener. Now, listening is very different from hearing. I hear you, but when I listen to you, I am looking at you, I'm engaging with you, I am thinking about what you say, and I'm actually feeling you. The word is empathy. When we are good listeners, we can walk in another person's shoes when they're telling a story, and we can feel how they felt. Listening is a key to good self-awareness. Number four, you have to be brave and you have to ask for feedback. We do this at work with those 360s when we find out what other people see and how they feel about us. As a speaker, when I get the reviews, I look at them all the time because feedback helps us grow and feedback helps us see if we are connecting. So be brave and ask for feedback. So today, I hope I gave you a few tips that you can go out and use and develop your self-awareness. Thanks, guys, for having me. I'm Karen McCullough. 